Okay, guys. So I got the, uh, the old T Max here, kind of apart a little bit. Uh, just kind of wrenching on it. I got the new transmission and some other stuff. Just waiting on my radio, but I'm gonna tear down the Dynamite 19 and uh, have a look inside because I have not done that in quite a while. So here we go. Okay, so. Uh, this is obviously a Dynamite 19. This is the early Dynamite 19 that had the issue with the pull starter being wrong or the back plate having the wrong spacing, so you have to make a shim. But that's not important anymore because they have fixed that. Two millimeter. And this engine is probably, I think, 10 gallons old. I did notice. Got a little bit of slop in the starter shaft there. That's okay because I have another back plate. Actually, I actually have a whole other brand new engine too. These engines aren't very expensive. I think they're only like under 10 bucks or something like that. And that, while well, we have it out, I'll take it apart on the camera for you guys. So the radio I have on order is the Futaba uh, 3, not 3 PV, it's like a 3 PV. P R K. It's like it's almost like three park. I can't remember what the fuck it's called, but that's um, hoo hoo. It's uh, not gonna show you guys quite yet here. You guys can wait just a moment. So, anywho, uh, yeah. So it's a three P R K or P K R or something. I can't remember what the hell it's called exactly. Like I was mentioning before. But uh, it should be here, I hope, this week. And I can put that in. We can take out the T-Max and actually drive it. Yeah, these screws are awful freaking tight. But yet again, I also have had this engine for five years, and it's only been a part once for new bearings two years ago. Uh, can't remember the bearing size off the top of my head at the moment. But if I do find it, I will let you guys know. So there's a the heat sink. Head button. And for anyone that's curious, you have one, two. Yeah, there's two. There's two gaskets, two, two shims. Okay, um, what do we need here? Let's see if it'll push the sleeve up. Maybe not. Let's see if I can grab it with my finger. Oh, here we go. I need to grab my little pair of pliers. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. <coughs> All right, so we're back. There is the sleeve. Um, fuck, I have to pause again. Hang on. And we're back. Okay. So, I have something special after this show you so we're going to rotate the top dead center just going to reach in there clean pliers and just slip the rod off the piston or off the crank sorry let's have a look here shall we i'm going to show you guys some differences here because people did ask me what the hell the difference is between the 19 and the 3.3 and i will get to that here momentarily let's clean this guy off here not that it was really dirty, but pretty good. So, okay. So that's after 10 gallons. Bearings, I have replaced them. As you can see, the crank is a little bit different than a 3.3 crank. It's actually a much lighter crank. That crank weighs almost 3 grams less than a 3.3 crank does. So we can look at our piston here. Looks like nothing out of the ordinary. It is bronze bushed. At both ends um, I am also buying soon um, sh18 connecting rod because I want to see if they're the same uh, someone said they are and I don't believe it but here is also the sleeve we have exhaust port transfer ports boost port so here is a 3.3 sleeve brand new obviously for my 3.3 this is a 0.19 this is a 0.20 so obviously it is lightly or slightly bigger but Intake port, 
transfer ports, exhaust port. The Dynamite 19, although the porting looks slightly smaller, actually does flow better than the 3.3 does. Um, also, like I was saying, it has a um, much better designed internal workings. If I can find that other connecting rod, I'm gonna fuck that one too. Okay. There we go. Well, I don't know how you guys are gonna be able to see that. If you look at that Dynamite 19 rod, both sides and see the design versus the 3.3 rod with that giant gouge up the center. This is bronze bushed at both ends. So for $110, uh, you're actually getting a, uh, a better made, cheaper, well, cheaper, but better made engine. Uh, and uh, this little Dynamite 19, man, I've, like I said, I've had it for just about, well, actually, no, I've had it for more than five years and 10 gallons plus. And it has been absolutely flawless. Let's see how much we got left there. So we're in the correct position. Look at that, 10 gallons. And you can see the pinch right here, right here, is where the pinch uh, line is. If the, if the piston comes all the way up to the very top, and it's coming out the end, you know that the piston the cylinder is shot. But after 10 gallons, look at that. It's almost still like a new engine. Very, very nice. I'm very impressed with it. Uh, I actually bought a second one. I'm probably going to buy it an extra. Just to keep on standby, because I like these things so much. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a clean out. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, we're back again. And nice and buttery smooth. These things actually have a much thicker bearing profile than the 3.3 does, um, which is a good thing because the 3.3, that's one of the reasons why the rear bearings let go is because the rear bearing profile is the shits. Very poor design. I'm going to clean these guys up just a little bit. And we're going to slap that piston and sleeve back in there. And we're just going to keep on burning nitro. Like I did mention, uh, I'm sorry I haven't been making much videos lately about bashing. I've just been so busy with work, it's been ridiculous. And uh, to the guy that says I complain too much in my video, you're going to complain on my YouTube channel about me complaining? Simply just go away. Don't even waste your time. You're an idiot. But thanks for the views, though. Freaking tool. Look at that piston there. Pretty good looking. This is burned homebrew. This is burned 0%. It's burned all sorts of stuff, and it's been absolutely just freaking mint. Like, uh, what's his name there? Uh, peg, peg leg, peg, whatever the hell his name is there. Uh, zip ties and bias plies, and what's the other guy there? Uh, uh, Dipshit and Dunlops or something like that, or Dumbass and Dunlops or whatever it's called. Um, someone asked if I was close to them, and, well, I'm about, well, about 14 hours away from uh, those guys. Love to hang out with them one day. I think it'd be pretty fun. Right. Yeah, pretty freaking clean in there. And that is an OSLC4 glow plug. Or no, sorry, that's a standard dynamite plug still. I forgot about that. All right. So, nice and clean. Put in some clots. Some of that down that rear bearing. People said, oh, the rear bearings explode. The rear bearings explode. Connecting rods are blown up. Da, 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 da. Well, I've never had that issue. I mean, when the bearings did get sloppy, I just replaced them. I mean, they think they were only like 14 or 15 bucks. It wasn't a huge deal. Um, if, your rear, if your connecting rod's failing constantly, it's probably because your drill's starting it like an idiot. Or you're running it so fucking lean that you keep popping the rod. So this is just Klotz Benol, Klotz Castor Oil. It's a great engine assembly lubricant. You can mix your fuel with it and do whatever you like. Yeah, this uh, piston, man, it looks like it was freaking barely run after 10 gallons. Not a freaking issue in the world. Yeah, like I said, it's just a much better designed engine. I mean, 
3.3s if you want to put the time and effort into them with a better carburetor and if you can find the Davis diesel rod for them and stuff and kind of you know run a real good set of bearings they can be a pretty pretty you know, stout engine to make some decent power but you know I mean to spend 150 bucks 200 bucks in parts uh, it's kind of fucking ridiculous so the cutout side of the piston faces the front faces the carburetor so I'm drop that guy in there and so you guys can see for fuck's sakes Fucking thing's worse than I am after about 12 pack. Jesus Christ. No, no, just don't friend. Okay, good. So we're just gonna spin our crank around, lift up our rod. Should just drop together usually. Of course, now I'm trying to do this on camera. People, oh, you said not use metal tools. Wah, wah, wah. Well, I'm not prying on it. I'm just using them to guide stuff. Look through our exhaust port. If you can look through the exhaust port, you see the cutout in the piston. You got it together wrong. Put that down bottom side center. A little castor oil in there. Oil on the outside. And I'm just going to take and clean up that little area there a little bit. I will make another video about tearing out the old transmission and putting the new one in. But I'm living on camera space and funding at the moment, so. Did, um, yeah, like I said, like I said earlier, you can see it's a five port. So you got exhaust. You don't count the exhaust. So I got exhaust port, two transfer ports, boost port, another two transfer ports. So this is a five, this is a three. So that's how you can tell. So it does flow a little bit better up top. That's why they, these actually do make just a little bit more RPM, a little bit more power, like I was mentioning, because they do flow more air and fuel better, and they have lighter internals, so they do spin faster. But like I said, when I have everything else, and that drill press is coming in, they're just... um. It's a stocking issue at the moment, so but you guys will see everything else. It's just shit's just taking forever, unfortunately. People go, oh, what's that little pinch mark at the top where it kind of feels funny? That's the pinch, that's normal. If it's doing that, you're good to go. I hold that piston. That's just the uh, fulcrum point of the connector rod, but there's no slop in it. Perfect. Couldn't be happier for. $125 Canadian. Fuck sakes, a 3.3 is what? 320 bucks for a new one from Traxxas, Canadian? That's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Thought shit, Traxxas probably only buys these engines for maybe $30 or $40 a piece after import fees and taxes. And they charge you. Oh, wait a minute here. Oh, well, my mistake. Remember I said there's two? There is three. So um, you can remove one of these if you want. Or if you're in a country where you can't get like 30%, then you can run one of these. If you're going to run 0%, run only one of these. And uh, you'll have high enough compression for 0%. Although I did run this on 0% a few times without actually even checking that. It seemed to run absolutely fine. So just something to keep in mind. 0% does like higher compression. Oop. A little bit of liquid wrench. Slap that cylinder head back on there. So I thought, oh, well, I'm going to take it apart and just give it a quick, a little quickie there. So you guys can see kind of what the hell's going on. I'm not going to bother putting the back plate on on camera because it's kind of pointless. I'm sure you guys understand what that looks like by now. But, um, yeah, there it is. There's the inside of a Dynamite 19, in case you guys are wondering. Um, another thing is um, some people said, oh, I ripped the carburetor boot 
on my engine or I stripped out the high speed needle, which this is a, um, aluminum carburetor. So you'd have to be kind of going a little bit too crazy with it to do that. Uh, can't get another carburetor. What do I do? What do I do? Well, if you order the SH18 rotary or sorry, slide carburetor, it is a direct fit. It's the exact same, uh, the exact same, uh, bore size and everything else. Uh, so I think they're like 35 bucks or whatever. And if you did want to put this engine in, say, a Rustler that had a Pro 15 in it, and you don't want to adapt your slide to fit, get a SH18 rotary carburetor. It'll drop right on. Then that way you can use your, your slide carburetor this way rather than, or sorry, your rotary carburetor this way rather than your slide opening out that way. So now there is options with these. They're actually quite a, quite a good little engine. And a lot of people say, oh, the exhaust don't seal properly, blah, 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 blah. Well... I just put a little bit of black RTV on there, stick my head around, let it cure up overnight, and run with that, because I, I do want a THS pipe kit, but I can't find one around here. And I'm certainly not paying $164 for one either, so I'm kind of making it work for now. But if you can get this with a THS pipe kit, break it in properly, take your time with it, and and, and run a good quality 30% fuel, about 9% oil, these things just fucking scream. They're a great engine, so don't ever hesitate to get one. Uh, people go, oh, well, how do I make it work in my Traxxas? Well, when you out buy the box, the engine with the box, there's instructions in there, so read those. Um, I'm sure that will help you. Anyhow, guys, so there she is. Ye old Dynamite 19. But look inside. Hope oh, you guys found that interesting. And uh, cheers, as always. Thanks for watching. Keep on burning nitro out there. Later.